So I sent the crew into the yard here just to finish up feeding those six colonies because they run out of supplement. And uh, I told them to start on one side of the yard and just feed all the colonies that don't have patties in them. Which were to be those six because I run out on those two there. And that was about a week ago, I guess it was. I dropped a pound and a half on these guys. Well, the crew started feeding. I've just found out they fed the whole yard because there is no supplement left. And these were just put on. They're absolutely devouring this patty. So these hives are exploding in growth. I'm gonna have to pull them down a little bit more, I think, maybe. I think. We'll have to see. Uh, there's bloom coming out now. So the clovers are just poking through. The alfalfas are uh, just starting to bloom. And we have all stages of canola, but that first stage of canola is um, just starting to bolt. So we are just on the verge of a heavy nectar flow here. We're gonna start, we actually put 200 excluders in today in the smaller yards. And planning on Monday, probably we're gonna start shaking bees down and putting excluders in the, on the anticipation of this flow. So we can't get behind on that. We had to be able to add space immediately as they fill up these hives. So these guys are working nicely into the second, which is good. Look at that. So I have other types of patty on my hives right now. And they're eating it, but not like this. It's very slow. Um, you know, I've I put on probably a pound uh, two, two and a half weeks ago, and they're just, they're still eating that pound. And this is another pound put on top of a pound and a half about a week and a half ago. So they're just devouring these patties that I put on here. They just love this stuff. So I guess I'll just do another shout out to the chef that these bees, my bees just absolutely love your product. And I'm gonna to have to start mixing more of this stuff. The whole apiary from now on is gonna get this product. Just look at that, they're just devouring it. There's a framer brood that is just hatching out. The little guys are just poking through. Ah, this time of year I hate. It's a lot of the hives, they look too big. They look too big, they're gonna swarm off. I see all this potential wealth out there that I could capitalize on, but I can't capitalize if these girls fly off on me. So how do I tell if this colony is uh, set up properly? How do I tell if it's strong enough that they'll bring in that massive crop, but not too strong that they'll swarm off on me? Everything is so bloody subjective. But a lot of it has to do with timing. Like these colonies, I've set up these colonies to mature. Um, within the next couple, three weeks, when there is all this abundance out there that they're gonna be collecting and bringing into, into the colony. Yeah, some of these colonies, when I set them up that way, some of these queens are just so terrific, they just you know explode into growth. And it's hard to anticipate exactly where they are or where they should be. And, you know, look in the colony one day, this time of year, 
and you come back in a few days and it looks completely different because either there's a flow that started, plugged the nest out, or there's like five frames of brood that just hatched and they need the space. Good frame of brood. So basically what I'm looking for is in this top box, I'm gauging everything from this top box here. You know, I want to see that queen up here. I want to see some a little bit of brood up here. I don't want to see a box plugged out. I don't want to see a box boiling over with bees. I don't want to see wall-to-wall -wall brood up here. But I don't want to see either. I don't want to see empty frames. I don't want to see no activity up here. I want to see colony that is, is expanding, expanding up. Because this colony, especially this one, I'm counting a frame and a half of brood just up top here. There's a nice nest of bees. There's a little bit of resource, but not overly really much. These bees are going to go and they're going to produce, bring me in all that early crop. The flowers are just about to start to bloom here. We're going to shake this down probably next week. We're going to make our rounds, get that queen in the bottom box, and get more space onto these colonies because. All this brood's gonna hatch and they're gonna require more in one box, like within the week, week and a half. It's just a matter of fact, we need more space. So we gotta move ahead. We gotta make sure that we have enough room inside these colonies because that's one of the biggest factors whether they're gonna swarm or not is if they have enough space within the nest to be able to house themselves, enough space to be able to bring in this resource and process it and store it away. We gotta keep them in that productive mode and if we confine them too much, or we, this time of year, if we, you know, constrain them too much, they'll just get into a, a swarmy type spirit and bugger off on us. So I don't really know how to, I don't know. It's, I'm just basically going through and I'm using my impression. I'm looking down and say, oh, okay, yeah, those guys look adequate. You know, there's a little bit of empty space on the sides and there's some activity in the center and they're busy working and they're growing, but they don't look overly big. Like I look down and some of these other colonies are just plugged full of bees and honey in the frames and some of them are wall-to-wall -wall brood up here. It's those guys you're thinking, yeah, shit, those guys are going to swarm for sure. So you got to spend a little bit of attention on them. So I just spent the last two weeks poking around the apiary doing that. Uh, the split's done, so I went back through and it just further skimmed, just equalized things out because uh, we worked pretty fast with the split so I just wanted to make sure that everything is basically the same size as I'm going through here just spot checking and I'm, I'm seeing uh, we did a pretty good job things look pretty uniform it's hard to tell um, what's going on in here it's hard to tell what benefit we provided these colonies until you know a few weeks in advance when things kind of uh, balance out as that brood hatches, as that queen progresses and keeps laying and the bees bring in the resource. It's all, what we're seeing here is basically like two or three weeks behind. Which makes it hard to read, but just, you know, we gotta look for cues to be able to anticipate what we want to see further on. So this is one of my stronger yards. And I've come back to it because I'm a little bit concerned it's gonna swarm off on me. So we're just going to work through a few here and just take a look. This colony is probably a little bit shy. So what I'm seeing is one, two, three, four, five empty frames on the outside. Um, activity in the center, which is positive, which is really good. Um, not a lot of brood in here. This colony is a little bit bigger. But it's not showing like an abundance of resource inside. So 
So I'm just looking at bees on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames up here. And I'm going to poke down. There isn't any bulging fat frames of honey, so they're not overly full of any type of resource. Empty on the outside. This is a colony that I've taken down in my equalization round. Here's a frame of brood. And I identified them as a little bit stronger that time because I can tell because I dropped them a frame of foundation to work on just to kind of drop a little bit of energy and they are drawing it out quite nice. So there's one frame of brood there. And open brood on that one. Frame of brood there. Guys are maybe a bit big yet. Beautiful frame of brood. So as we go through um, this, when we shake the queen down, when we uh, put the excluders in, I'm going to be working ahead of the shake crew, and I'm going to be basically assessing these colonies as we go, and further skimming. So obviously this queen is absolutely fantastic she's providing a lot of wealth here so I'm gonna take a little bit more from them and you know take a frame of brood like this and give it to a colony here maybe that's just Set back just a little bit, give them the empty frame. And that just kind of further evens things out as I fuss my way through the apiary to try to bring the whole apiary to a common strength and just trying to take the edge off the swarm. I'm keeping them strong, I'm keeping them right at that borderline where if they are a little bit too strong and all of a sudden they run out of space, they'll swarm. I'm keeping them at that borderline so then when they're strong like this, all that resource comes in, we give them space and they put it into storage for us. They hoard it and make me a lot of money. This time of year, a beekeeper's job is never done. So when the colonies are transferred in, so they could use a boost. Here's a great big colony. Smoking down from the top. From the equalization round, you can tell that I've already pulled from them because I have a frame of foundation in here just for them to put some work. But you can see, look at the honey they've stored out in here. I just want to take a peek to see how much brood's in there. So I've already, I might have already stripped them to a point where I don't want to pull them down anymore. But if that queen's come up and she's you know, laid this top box out full of brood, I've got to pull them back just a little bit more. She has. Look at that frame of brood. That's fantastic. Just love seeing frames of brood like that. So I'm going to pull these guys back a little bit more because I'm counting one, two, three just right there. I haven't got to that side. Make sure the queen stays in the colony and inspected this frame. She wasn't there, but just to make sure, shake the bees in for colony. And then these guys needed a boost. They can even use a two frame boost. There isn't a lot going on up top here. Just starting to store some nectar up top.
partial. We'll keep that in here. It's a full frame of brood. Tons of bees in this colony. Working out that foundation. So I don't want to pull them back too much. So I don't want to take the crop out of them. You know, you can't punish the the, the great big successful ones because those are the ones that make you the money. So you can't pull them back too much just in the fear of swarming. But at the same time, you have all that wealth that we got to collect and they got to go for a good long while yet. So we got to make sure they're not too strong and swarm off on us. So if they swarm, then they don't make us any money. is right laid out. This queen's feeling good. The nectar. She has this side right laid out. As she's got this side. stored nectar on that so I'm just gonna leave them at that one of the biggest mistakes I see beekeepers making this time of year is they're so paranoid of colonies that are too big they're so paranoid of swarming that they they see a big colony they just slash it right down and the problem is by doing that while well, you're avoiding swarming of course but at the same time you're just completely stripping any possibility of capitalizing on any type of flow out there because you just slash them down so much that they're not productive anymore. So instead you have a whole apiary full of these small hives, maybe lots of them, but they're not producing any, any money. Unless you're in the bee building business, but here we're in the honey producing business. So we got to focus on developing these colonies out to be able to uh, capitalize on that crop out there. And we're walking that line we're going to lose some to swarms you know that's just inevitable we're going to see some fly away on us but for the most part we're going to keep most of them at home and strong enough to be able to bring in that abundance of wealth and for us as beekeepers we're going to be able to capitalize that and that's what keeps us in business so we can't be afraid of strong colonies and in a way it's kind of like cutting your hair uh, you start cutting your hair and you cut it too short right off the start and then you got to wait for it to grow back out, right? But if you just cut a little bit at a time until you are, you know, happy with what you see, uh, you get a better result right off the start. 